You've got to love God with your with your strength, with all that you've got. The difference between Mr. A and Mr. B, or the difference between what Mr. A receives from God and what Mr. B receives from God, is dependent on their love for God. It is what dependent on their love for God, the degree of the love that they got for God. Let me read this scripture to you. 1 Corinthians 2 9. The Bible says that the eyes have not seen, the ears have not heard, neither has he entered into the heart of man the things that God wants. As reserved for those that he loves, for those that love God has special reservation for those that love him. And if you truly, if you truly love God, Romans 8 28, another good scripture, it's all things are working together for good for those that love. People claim these verses a lot. Oh, everything is working together for even when things are really going bad. <laughs> you say it's working together for good for do you love God? If you must claim this promise of God in every situation of your life, then can you say you love God? If you love God, do you know how to start? Do you know how we love God? He's seeking the kingdom. Your attitude is seeking the kingdom of God and His righteousness first. You know what we do? We chase after the blessings of God. We chase, we run after the blessings. We want to achieve this. We want to do this. So I'm taking up a job on Sunday. You know that happens a lot in the UK. Ah, people just do everything. You know, here yeah, we are more relaxed. But in the UK, ah, I do a lot of things. We claim that we love God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and every other thing will be added, shall be added unto you. Goodness and mercy shall follow me. Not mercies running after, I mean, not me chasing the mercies, following it. The Bible didn't teach us that. It doesn't tell us that we should run after the blessings of God. They are meant to follow you. As the child of the most high God. Where is our father? If you struggle the way world struggles, if you do things the way world does it, then where is God? What is the difference between those that serve the Lord and those that do not serve God? He say, I will make a di- I will make a clear difference between those that serve me and those that do not serve me. Where is that difference? In our life. Loving God, if you ask many people, choose between your job and God. You know people tell you, I can't come to church today because of rain. <laughs> but they wouldn't because of rain to stop going to work. What is wrong with us? There is the love for God. I want to sick today. So I can't come to church. Please don't misunderstand me. This is sensitive, but this is reality. There is nothing wrong with staying at home with our sick loved ones. But God must come. My point is God must come. If he is not going to take the first position in your life, then he wouldn't take any other position. And if you claim that we love him, we want to assess the fullness of God that feels all in all, we must love God. Hallelujah. Point number one, I think I will drop it there and move to another point. Because of our time. 
You know another one that came to me just now. People can spend hours watching TV programs, sports especially. Wow. Half of that time they cannot give to God. See they die in the house of God. They say you guys are wasting time. God is wasting your time. You love God. Show me the love for God. I pray that God Almighty will touch every one of us in Jesus. Amen. I think what we need to do will take us to the next point. Let me see. You need to look inside of your heart and get rid, eliminate all those things that easily set you back. We have talked about the love of God. And we have talked about your love for God. The next thing you need to look at critically, assess yourself. Search yourself. Look at those things, you know, that set you back. Hebrew 12 1 says that let us lay aside. Every way that sin, which do easily beset us. And let us run the race with patience. The race set before us. The little foxes that stole the vine. Let's put them aside. And look unto Jesus. The author the finisher, the one is able to do exceeding abundantly beyond all we can ask or think. Let's set our eyes on you. Let's look unto him. Let's leave behind those wrong associations that doesn't bring glory. That those associations that don't edify the name of the Lord. We don't do things because of people. You don't do things because you want to please men. You do things because God is approved of it. Let's leave those associations, bitterness, or forgiveness. Some of us can live without forgiveness. Wow, Christians. He said, even if God comes down from heaven, oh, I won't forgive him. <laughs> Envy. Pride. You know, sometimes many of us, we say things. We try to say it like we produce it to even testify to the goodness of God, but it's pride. <laughs> but the Bible says that God looks into the heart. He is taking the purpose. I can't see the purpose whether we are glorifying God or we are exhibiting our pride. But there is God who sees and knows all things. Let's search our hearts. Let's search, let's examine our hearts. Let's examine ourselves. That we may experience open heaven. That we may experience the fullness of the blessings of God in our lives. Lamentation 340 says, let us search out and examine our ways and turn back to the Lord. Sammy says in Psalm 119.59, I thought about my ways and I turned my feet. Wow. If you are craving for open heavens, then there is a need for repositioning ourselves. We need to reproduce God's nature in our lives. We need to begin to operate at the same wavelength with God. We need to stop depending on ourselves and start trusting him more. Yes. Yes. 
let's let's stop, you know, self efforts. Let's leverage on absolute reliance on God. It amazes me that people sometimes we want God's blessings. But we don't mind to get it in the way that the world is getting it. We do all kinds of things. And we say, it's God has blessed me. You lie to get something. You do all kinds of games and everything. Something that you cannot even share with people. You forgot it, the devil is the father of all liars. Let's rely more on God, people of God. Really, do you want to experience the blessings of God? I pray that God will open your heaven today in the mighty name of Jesus. God will give you an experience that will be beyond your imagination, that will be beyond your experience in the mighty name of Jesus. Our love for God must stand out. Our love for Him must what? Stand out. Let me go to another point. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to tell you more about maturity. Spiritual maturity. How it can position you for the blessings of God. I've told you that God wants you to grow up. From being a child of God to being a son of God. No wonder Paul said, I want to know him, the power of his restoration, the fellowship of his suffering. And you see him craving for knowing God more and more, deeper and deeper. Asking for more intimacy with God so that he can access some level of power. Authority that is not meant for just anybody. There are things that we need to do. There are prices that we need to pay. If you want to grow up, what you are feeding on is very important. I don't have time again. I have to start bringing it to a close. What you drink, the fellowship that you attend. I think I should tell you more about this fellowship. I can't go through all this point again. But let me tell you this about fellowship. Because I say that devil, you know, as a way of deceiving people. Hebrew 5.28 said, do not neglect or forsake the assembly of the brethren. If God is all-knowing God, then which he is, it means that God is aware from the foundation of the earth that there will be a time that there will be TV. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And he warned you and said, don't forsake the assembly you know, some people claim that we are Christians, so I can grow on my own. It's a lie. It's a deception of the devil. Do you know what can grow on its own? Only wheat. Wheat cannot grow on its own. And look at what the Bible says. And I think I will. Psalm 92, verse 12 says, The righteous shall flourish. Like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Look at verse 13. And that talks about those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish. You know, there is a way the being in the fellowship, the assembly of the brethren grows you. There is a way it helps you to grow. And they claim, oh, I can sit at home and just grow on my own. This is a deception of the devil. I have other points that can help you to grow. Exercise your spirit, man, putting things that you are learning into practice. But we cannot go into all that anymore. Another thing that must work well in your life is faith. And I will stop there. I will talk a little more about this, then I will just stop. <laughs> your faith. Is also involved. You need to believe in the goodness of God. You want your able to open? 
Even the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. But the problem with faith is, faith is actually very difficult <laughs> to have. Let's, be, let's face the reality. It is what? It's not so easy. But where do we get the faith from? It's in what we are feeding ourselves with. The faith comes by what? By hearing, by reading, by studying the word of God. When you read the word of God, your faith grows. If everything you pay your attention to is newspaper, it creates fear in you. If the news of the world, look at everything that is going on, that is where you focus your mind on, it puts fear in you. But when you read the word of God, it puts faith in you. Let's try to start. Oh, bless you, I thank you, Lord. So God can do all things. And is able to do exceeding abundantly beyond all we think, all we can imagine. According to his power that works in us. You want to be able to open today? The starting point is you need to examine your life. I don't know before we go on to say two prayers or thereabouts. If you have anybody in our midst and you've been praying for open heavens. But you have no relationship with your maker. And you want to make it up with God and say, God, I want you to touch my life. Amen. Or I want to rededicate my life for God. I have looked through my life. I have seen that I have missed it in several ways. And I want God to help me in this journey. I have realized that there are things in my life that I need to put behind. Those things that easily set me back. And I want God to help me. I want heaven to open unto me. I want to have that revelation of the knowledge of the suffering of Christ. I want to enjoy that fellowship in his suffering. I want to live that life that is approved of God. And you say, God, I want to just start with you. Jesus says that I'm there, I'm just waiting for you. I'm staying beside you just to open the door of your heart for me so that I can come in and live with you for the rest of my life. But you have to give God that chance. You are sitting there and the Spirit of God is telling you that you need to rededicate your life to God. Or that you even need to give your life to Christ. I will quickly pray with you before we will continue with a few more prayers. And bring this session to an end. If you are there, just put on your hand and all eyes closed. You want God, you want to start with God, you want God to start the journey with you, you want God to open the heaven unto you. And you have examined your life. The scripture says that we should examine our life. Sammy so says that I examine my way and I turn my feet. I just search my heart. I see that there are things that I need to drop and those things that I need to lay down for Christ so that God can lift me up. And you are there and say, God, I want to lead them now. I want you to help me. I want you to see me through. I want you to stand by me in this journey. I want you to support me. If you are there, let me see your hands. You just have the opportunity now. The Bible says that if you are ashamed of me in this world, then I will be ashamed of you in the world to come. Why will you be in front of your maker and you will be ashamed of God? You can't just be ashamed of him. If the Spirit of God is telling you something, the book of Hebrews says that you should not just despise his voice. When you are hearing his voice, talk it to me. And I want all of us to begin to pray and say, Lord, Anything in my life that is not working well, that is not making your power to work well, anything that is standing in between me and my maker, anything that is standing in between me and my destiny, anything.
anything that is between me and my open neighbor, that today I cancel it by the blood of the Lamb, that today I cancel it by the blood of Jesus, by the power in the blood of Jesus, whatever that it is that is standing between you and where God is taking you to. Oh, whatever that is hindering you from enjoying the fullness of God that fills all in all, that today I leave them behind, that I ask for God to help me to, that in this journey of life, I rely on God, God help me, that Lord, I want to have a different experience of you, I want to have an encounter, oh Lord, that will create history, I want In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Our dear Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we give you praise. Yes, Lord. We give you honor. Amen. Thank you for refreshment. Yes, Lord. That is refreshing Amen. to our spirit Amen. that you have given us. Lord, thank you for reminding us Amen. that your ability remains the same. Amen. Your power does not change. Hallelujah. And whatever that you have done before, you can do it again. Amen. Whatever that you have done in somebody's life before, you can do it in our life Amen. again. Amen. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you. We are different our desires today. Amen. You alone know it. Yes. I don't know how you're going to do it. Hallelujah. Father, it is my desire. Yes. It is my prayer, Lord. That even as your people live here today, let there be something Amen. that they will remember to your own name. Amen. Lord, prove your faithfulness in their lives. Amen. Prove your almightiness in their situation. Amen. Let them know that there is God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. The Bible says that God is not a man that will lie. Whatever that you say you can do, you can do. And you are God that does things in abundance. Surprise your people, Lord. Amen. Every impossibility is in their lives. Because you are God that has the final say. Make it possible, Lord. Amen. Every struggle in their lives. Lord, replace with your favor. Amen. Let labor disappear. Amen. In the mighty Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. Above all, Lord, we crave yes. to know you more. Amen. Lord, we want more of you. Amen. We want less of ourselves. Amen. Help us, Lord. Thank you, Thank you everlasting Amen. kingdom, Lord. That we love you more. 
In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Let's put our